Hello, how are you? I hope you're well. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you're new here, my name is Lily and I create style content here on YouTube, but also over on Instagram and TikTok, and I will leave a link to those in the description box down below. Today, I'm going to be sharing my entire wardrobe. I recently moved overseas to Boston in the United States with just one suitcase. And I thought this would be the ideal time to share my entire wardrobe because it is currently unusually small. I used to live in Sydney in Australia, and as you can probably tell, I am Australian. And I moved to Boston recently with my husband, Theo, so that he can study his master's here. And we made the decision not to bring all of our stuff with us because it's very expensive moving things overseas. And logistically, it was just gonna be an absolute nightmare. So I packed my suitcase and that is what I arrived in a new country with. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my wardrobe section by section, probably starting with tops first. And within each section, I'm gonna make notes about whether I wanna add anything to my wardrobe, which will probably be quite a lot, and whether I wanna remove anything from my wardrobe, which at the moment is likely to be basically nothing. And in a separate video, which will be the next one to go up on this channel, I'm going to share what I would hypothetically add to my wardrobe and why. And what I'm hoping for this video is that it will give you a really good idea of how I approach building a wardrobe, not quite from scratch, but nearly from scratch. And I hope you do find this video helpful because I think a lot of the content out there around capsule wardrobes makes it feel like it has to be really minimalist or neutral or limiting, or on the other hand, like you have to spend thousands of dollars just to end up with a wardrobe that looks like everyone else's. And I hope you do find this video helpful because I think a lot of the content out there around capsule wardrobes makes it feel like it has to be really limiting or neutral or minimalist, or like you have to spend thousands of dollars to have a wardrobe that ends up looking just like everyone else's. When I really think that wardrobes are always a work in progress that has to fit with what's practical for our lifestyle, with what feels good, and what makes us feel like our best selves at any point in our lives, which changes over time. So buckle up because we are going for a ride and I'm going to share the tops with you first. So firstly, this top that I'm wearing right now, just a black turtleneck. This one's a really thin knit. I love it. It's classic, goes with skirts, goes with jeans. I wear it all the time. The all important stack of t-shirts in a range of whites, blacks, grays, and stripes. Lots of my t-shirts are from Uniqlo, uh, but H&M also do really good ones. And they're just easy for tucking into skirts and jeans for a more casual look. I have a range of beige knitwear. I'm not sure how I ended up with three beige jumpers, but there you go. This one is a beige turtleneck. I've been wearing this one quite a lot lately. It just feels cozy and autumnal and a little bit chic. Another beigey brownie jumper. This one has a more open neck. I got it for $6 at an op shop and I am very happy with it. And this one is a chunkier, cozier situation. It's also a little bit cropped, which means it looks really good with um, high-waisted bottoms. I have two of these flat knit tops, one in this black and then another one in white, and they're both from Tusa. And I really like the flat knit. Some brands call it like a Milano knit, but it's a really professional looking fabric. And I wear these all the time to work in the summer months. And then because I love having a black and white tank top type option so much, for outside of work, I have these ones that are cut a little bit lower. They have a square neck. And I've worn these ones so, so many times. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen them quite a lot. And I think I've actually worn them on this channel as well. So I've got one of those in black and one of them in white. And they're just like a soft rib knit. I love these. I got so much wear out of them over the summer. I have a few tops that don't really fit with my style, but I like them anyway. The first one is this mustard colored frilly linen top. This is really comfortable to wear and I wore it quite a bit over the summer. I have this Princess Highway polka dot blouse. I really love the green color. It's got the tie around the neck, which I think is really nice. It's a little bit like sexy secretary vibes, but I like wearing these with jeans and a belt to kind of cinch the waist in because otherwise it's a bit puffy. And then I have this top, which is one of the oldest pieces in my wardrobe. I bought it from American Apparel in 2013, I wanna say. So it's been with me for nine years. Uh, and I roll it out every time there's a island theme or Hawaiian shirt themed party. And sometimes I wear it unironically as well. It's a little bit see-through, which is kind of cool. It's really floaty. It's perfect for that like stinking hot, humid weather when you just don't want to be wearing anything. I actually love it. And then I have these two linen shirts, which are absolute staples in my wardrobe. I've styled them heaps of times on here. I photographed them for Instagram a bunch of times. I mostly like wearing them with shorts or with jeans and also was just like a throw over kind of thing with leggings or bike shorts in summer. Moving on to pants and skirts, I'm gonna shift you back so you can see it full length. The first one is this Realization Par Naomi skirt, which I absolutely love and get so much wear out of. 
I just feel like it's appropriate for so many occasions. The particular leopard print I think makes it work super well as a neutral and the cost per wear on this has already been so worth it. The only thing I will say is that it's quite a delicate fabric for something so expensive so you really want to be mindful that you're not getting pulled threads in it. Next I have these two skirts from Tusa that I've had for most of the last year and I've got heaps of wear out of both of them. I think particularly the larger print fabric is really appropriate for work but it's also nice for the weekend and then this smaller ditzy print kind of fabric I don't really wear this to work but that's just my personal preference um but they both look great with t-shirts with the linen shirts with tank tops I don't know I get so much wear out of them and then finally I have just a plain black silk midi skirt if you can't tell I freaking love this style this one was very inexpensive and that is reflected in the quality so I'd probably look to upgrade this at some time in the future but for now it serves my purposes perfectly this section is pants and skirts but the pants situation is pretty dire these jeans I really like the wash but they don't really fit me I bought them in a larger size when I couldn't fit the smaller size that I had previously um, but they're too big for some reason and I've already had them tailored once and it hasn't really fixed the situation. They don't look heaps too big on me in the video but I think they're just a little bit baggy around the front and I'm not into it. Maybe it's the length, maybe I'll crop them a little bit more and they'll work better. Tell me in the comments if I should crop them. Okay, the other pair of jeans I have are um, these ones, they're the Levi's ribcage jeans in one of the light washes. I bought them secondhand, so I don't know exactly what the wash is, but the size, it says they're a 32, which is exactly the same as the other pair that I have in a slightly darker wash that's called the Georgie wash. Those are the ones that you've seen on this channel before. The lighter washes, I, it's something to do with like the moisture in the dye, but these ones fit a lot tighter and they're just a little bit too small, but I'm sort of holding out hope that they will fit within a couple of months. And if they don't, I'll send them on their way. But if they do, that would be awesome because I think a light wash denim, especially for the cooler months is really cool. I think it looks really chic paired with black, like with this turtleneck and a pair of chunky boots. I think that's a great look. And then last of the pants, I have this black linen cropped pair, which were awesome on my Australia East Coast road trip back in December, January last year. But these are gonna be no good to me for at least another six months because it's just gonna be cold. All right, dresses. I have a couple from Realization Pa, including this one. I think it's called the Allegra dress. It's a long silk dress with a bit of a fish effect at the bottom. It's got slightly thicker straps up the top so it's not quite the same as those canny slip styles which I like. And the print of this one has just this really interesting detail. It's got a sort of Chinese dragons print that you can only really see in some lights. I think it's a really pretty dress and I keep this as my formal black tie events dress so that I don't have to be constantly, so that I don't have to buy a new dress every time I have one of those events come up which isn't that often and that's why I need a go-to dress for it. Next I have another realization par dress this one is the carolyn dress from the claudia schiffer collaboration i really like this one wore it heaps over the summer i think it looks really chic but also kind of cute and sweet then i have a selection of colorful summer dresses i wore these heaps over the summer it's so easy to just throw one of these on with a pair of sandals and a straw bag and you're good to go. Especially in Europe, I found lots of women were wearing this type of colorful sundress in like London and Paris. So I got lots of wear out of these over the summer. And I have this lovely green dress from Princess Highway. It's crumpled because it's linen and linen needs an iron before you've already finished ironing it. This one's really great for the summer as well. Just a short, sweet sundress. And then finally, I have this dress, which is from Tusa. It's like a short black cocktail dress. And I would wear this for events that are a little bit fancy, but not fancy enough to roll out the Silk Realization Par floor length number. I don't have much in the way of coats and jackets because they're obviously quite bulky to pack in a suitcase and I didn't really have things in Sydney that would be useful in Boston because Boston gets so much colder than Sydney does. Like it's only the beginning of autumn and it's already as cold as it gets in the dead of winter in Sydney. So that's what we're working with. I did however buy one winter coat and this will have to do me for now. Let's talk about handbags. This is one I've had for a few years now. Um, it's a little bit similar to a style that Loewe does that was really popular, but it's just a small, simple crossbody straw bag that I think goes really well with pretty much everything in summer. It's been really handy while traveling. Um, the one that I have zips up at the top, which is essential. And this one is lined on the inside, which I really like. And it just carries the right amount of things for heading out for the day. Another bag I always keep for travel is my Whistles Mini Verity bag. I think, I don't know if it's the mini ones or the big ones were really, really popular 
like five years ago or something, but I still really like this bag. I think the leather that it's made from is really nice. It's got this beautiful pebbling on it. It still has that leather smell and it's just a really great size for heading out for the day sightseeing. I can fit a small drink bottle. I can fit my money. I can fit everything I want to take with me for a day out in this. And Something I also really like about this bag is that it's lined with a light colored lining, which makes it easy to find things and just kind of adds to the luxury feel. And the last small bag I have is this little one from Barber that I got in 2013. So I've had this one for nine years. And I remember my dad bought it for me from a barber shop in London. And because of course everything's in British pounds, um, he buys it for me and then we go back to Australia a few weeks later and he you know, has obviously been through his credit card statement. And he says to me, Gee, silly, that bag is a little bit more than I thought it was. <laughs> but I can hardly feel bad because the cost per wear I've got on this bag is incredible and I've been using it like nonstop for nine years. And it's basically, I use the straw bag in summer and then this goes with everything in autumn and winter. It's one of those bags that I hope that I will have for the rest of my life. And speaking of bags I hope I'll have for the rest of my life, this is my coach tote bag. This is the bag I use for work. And even though it's big, I really wanted to bring it with me to the US because I didn't want to have to buy like another tote that just seems like such a waste. So this one's great. And a note on Coach is that I find their bags are pretty durable and I think the particular styles that they use because they're like relatively minimal when it comes to branding and that kind of thing. And they take on, you know, classic equestrian style motifs where they do do that stuff. I think a lot of Coach bags are relatively timeless. So I hope that this bag is with me for a long time as well. Bear with me because we are onto the final category, which is shoes. So I recently posted on TikTok and Instagram a shoe collection video that I filmed when I was back in Australia. And I don't have all of those shoes with me, but I brought as many of them as I possibly could. So first I have a pair of um, black Chelsea boots. These ones are the Canary shoes from Baird and I love them. They are so comfortable. They go with everything. They're fantastic for pretty much all seasons and they are the shoe that I wear the most and have worn the most for the last like six months. Another shoe that is a very strong contender for shoe that I have worn the most are these Windsor Smith sandals. They're the Bondi style. I really like how the style looks and that's why I wear them. I think they go with everything in summer, but they are flat as anything and it's like walking on the ground with bare feet, which is especially challenging if you're walking on gravel or cobblestones or that sort of thing. They're not comfortable. I would love to find a style to replace these, but this is what I'm working with and I have repurchased these shoes at least once after I completely wore them to death for several years. My third most worn pair of shoes are these Supergas. They're just a simple white leather sand shoe. I used to have a pair of white canvas sneakers and I had multiple pairs of the white canvas Converse shoes back in the day as well. But I think I really like the leather version because you can keep it looking a little bit cleaner and I feel like it lasts a bit longer. Whereas the canvas starts to look pretty drab pretty quickly and it doesn't fare well in the washing machine. So leather is the way to go for these. These are the bed full mask sandals and I'm really glad I brought these with me. They're so much more comfortable than pretty much any other brand of shoe I've tried, especially for heels. Obviously this one just has like a shorter chunky heel, which makes it a lot more comfortable, but the way that they're designed their soles makes them very comfortable. The only thing with these shoes is that when I first got them, the tube straps on the front kind of dug into my toes a bit, but now that I've stretched them out, they're fine. Like every other person in the world, I have a pair of grubby looking Birkenstocks, which I really like. I also have a pair of Tevers, which I have worn so much and they have been really handy. Although I definitely won't be getting anywhere out of them for at least the next six months. Then I have a pair of just simple black pointed toe pumps. These ones are from Steve Madden and I actually bought them from Nordstrom Rack after I got to Boston because I needed a more professional looking shoe in case I had events that I needed to wear something like that. So I think a black pump is always a classic. And the last pair of shoes are another pair of shoes I bought after I got to Boston, but they are a pair of bean boots, which are ubiquitous in New England because of the weather. I think pretty much everyone has them. They're basically rain boots. We call them gum boots in Australia, but I guess they have a little bit more grip on the bottom and they're just the style that everyone has. So I got a pair of these so that I'm all set for the snowy slushy weather that I am assured will um, make its way to Boston for several months. <laughs> Thank you so much for going through my wardrobe with me. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about what I would like to add to my wardrobe. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified when it goes live. Thanks for watching and I will see you back here for another video next week.